field left side Andrews fights the sun and will give way to Cabrera one on one out with Big Mac coming to the plate for his first at bat on the final day of the season. You see a little tap to the shin guard of Michael Barrett. Mark McGuire Tony La Russa and the Cardinals as you look at the Casino Queen leaderboard this is it. National League leaders, Major League leaders, McGuire and Sosa, the top two in the game, and how the Cardinals have been very impressed with and pleased with the way the Expos have pitched to McGuire. Well, Tony, uh, Tony kind of challenged other managers. And Felipe Alou, you know, a very proud man and a very proud manager of young teams, said, We're not going to be cowards. We're going to go right after him. Now, that doesn't mean in the effort to go after him on occasion you don't walk him. A little high one ball one strike. McGuire looking for historic home run number 69. The numbers are staggering 143 RBI. A little inside and McGuire came up empty strike two. Joe, you remember when we were in Florida and he hit home runs number 55, 56, and the next day 57, 58? Most people at that time projected, most of his teammates, Tony Russo projected he would end up with 70. And he has his chance. One and two, the count of McGuire. One on, one out. Two and two. Well, amazing, Al, to sit here. These fans are standing here expecting, expecting Mark McGuire to hit a home run. It's not that easy. No. <laughs> He's done it 68 times this year. And a little flare into center. That's going to fall for a hit and send the queuing from first to third. So no home run, but a scoring threat now as McGuire dumps one into shallow center. And let's hopefully the fans will stay on their feet for Brian Jordan. McGuire has tried as much as he could to tell everyone how much he appreciates both Ray Lankford and Brian Jordan protecting him. A big part of the success. Breaking ball, opens up on it, didn't hit it around the label, but muscles it for the base hit. So B.J. gets the chance with runners at the corners one away and the Cardinals threatening to go on top. That will get out of play for strike one. Jordan. Al. Could be playing his last day in a Cardinal uniform. Yeah that's what uh, I mean that's the reality and if you talk to the Cardinals and you talk about all the needs that they have. You can't resign their potential free agents and still fulfill other pressing needs of the ball club. Jordan to the left side. That's going to put the cards on top. No chance to turn two. Cardinals up one to nothing in the first as McEwing comes back to the dugout after scoring the first run of the day. RBI number 91 for Brian Jordan and the Cardinals have a lead for Matt Morris. Now Gant one on two out. An interesting note that Tom Mee just passed along in my ear, our director, our producer, whatever the heck he is. Mark McGuire with that single in the first inning has tied Roger Maris's mark of home runs in 1961 with his 61st single. Here's a guy, Mark McGuire, who has 150 hits, 68 home runs, and 61 singles for an entire season. He set a record also, I think, with the most walks and the most strikeouts. Some type of record, you know, for non, you know, not not making contact. 
It's and amazing. A dubious one. You've got McGuire who has walked a mere 161 times, 28 times intentionally. He has 68 home runs, 21 doubles, no triples. Said it would take an act of God for him to have a triple. And you know how tough it is for him to hit a double. So he hits the ball so hard and they play so deep. And he's got 61 singles. Can't at the plate. We wait the first pitch from Thurman. Jordan starts and stops, and Ron comes up empty. Ron, a 239 hitter, so the average has been creeping up there. 26 home runs, 67 RBIs, and I think he will leave a better lasting impression because of this final month's work than obviously he would have had the season ended a month ago because his numbers weren't good when you looked at the average and now that he's pushing 240 it's not great but it's not 212 like it was for the better part of the second half and they're the numbers for September and they're great yeah, if, you, if you really look at, and here's a real key if you look at his numbers after the birth of his latest child after the complications there was a little touch and go initially and once he, his mind could relax he's really responded. Sometimes we forget these guys are human beings and they have the same problems that that's Tony's favorite saying they're men not machines. OK. OK. I put it a different way. But OK. But it's true. You know we you expect them to be mechanical robots. They come out here can do everything and forget about their day to day problems that everyone else experiences. Jordan running on a pitch inside got a great jump and steals second easily. Ryan Jordan got a perfect jump and gets number 17 as he gets himself into scoring position. So now Gann with a hit could double the Cardinal lead. One to nothing here in the first inning. A leadoff hit by McEwing. Drew popped out. McGuire with a flare single in the center, sent McEwing to third, and an RBI force out off the bat of Jordan. Gant takes it just inside, three and two. Now it looks like the season is ending today for the New York Mets. Well, they trail five to one with Atlanta batting in the bottom of the fourth. Behind Maddox. The Braves have already knocked out starter Reynoso and it's Hideo Nomo pitching and boy was he a letdown. I thought maybe a change of scenery. I didn't realize he was going as bad as he's going. He's lost it in a hurry. You know last year when I was over in the Orient talking with people they said that Japanese Korean pitchers usually are history at about age 32. Jordan stealing third but strike three is called over the inside corner and Gant is gone. The inning is over. By the way, Tom Mee is producing today. Tom McLaughlin is directing, and we're through one with a Cardinal. Well, folks, baseball fans, you're not going to want to miss this after today's game. Live today at 4.30 p.m., one for the record books, Baseball 98, Fox Sports Net. It will be brought your way on Fox Sports Midwest. Perfect day for that, right? Last day of the regular season before the postseason begins. That's true. I mean, so many people. Doesn't matter what in what capacity you watch the Cardinals, whether it's as a fan, whether it's as a teammate, whether it's as an announcer, whether it's as an umpire, uh, anybody. It, this this has been a big thank you kind of a season for Mark McGuire, and he's given us all memories we will never forget. Yeah, and today, after the game in a post-game ceremony, Mark will receive the St. Louis Award. For the individual who made the most outstanding contribution or brought the greatest distinction to the metropolitan St. Louis community. Man, how who about who the was ribbon? second? Who I was second <laughs> on that list. <laughs> I don't know. And Whoever it was was nowhere near. Well, I'm sure they were a very distinguished individual, but nowhere near. Better luck next year. Uh oh, the press scrambles. When sports writers get a souvenir, they sometimes are hard pressed not to fall over one another going after a foul ball. Do you agree with that. Oh yes. They have a tough time. Yes. It's tough to 
stab a foul ball or a souvenir with a pen, isn't it? They've got the well, power. They, sta of the they stab other things. That's right. A ball and two strikes, and Fulmer is out in front, and now back in the dugout. Second strikeout for Morris. And the leadoff man is gone here in the second. Now we know Matt Morris just has the great ability, and so much of it is this curveball. Just a phenomenal pitch to go along with an upper echelon fastball. There's what he did the last time out. Of course, his last two times out, we say 16 combined for 16 shutout innings. Saw Matt in the clubhouse before the game and he was checking out his nails and they were getting a little long. He said, Should I cut these? Are these going to affect my curveball? But if you're asking me, you got problems, pal. He leaves leaving them though, and I think the early returns are long nails are okay with the Matt Morris curveball. So, it sounds kind of funny, but there is a midpoint. If they're too short, you develop a blister underneath. You know from the seams the friction of the seam and if they're too long sometimes the seam will catch it and rip it on four straight Michael Barrett who's hitting an even 300 a rookie draws a walk and that's the second base runner for the Expos today so one on one out and the lineup progresses to Shane Andrews who walks in what a thrill it's got to be for a guy like Michael Barrett to stand there next to McGuire. And McGuire put his hand on his back, and I would imagine he is appreciative, maybe not saying it, but I know that McGuire is appreciative that he's at least getting pitches to handle from the Expos, and that's a credit to Felipe Alou. And as you said, he said, we're trying to develop confidence, we're not trying to develop cowards. The 0 1. One ball, one strike. The only way to learn is to pitch. And the only way, and if you pitch long enough, you're going to have your ups and downs, but you learn from mistakes. Who you knows? An effort to pitch to him, you might have somebody just absolutely dominate him, and when, doesn't that gain a lot of confidence? Strike two on Shane Andrews. One on, one out, one to nothing. Cardinals in the second, and Shane Andrews set up. And a check swing grounder that will roll foul. It was a hit if it stayed fair, but it squirted foul, and the count stays one and two. Well, Al and Bob Ramsey and Tom Me, Tom McLaughlin, Al Broughton, Doug Stanton, everybody. It's been another great year. It's been a an enormous amount of fun in 1998 covering a team that has disappointed in some respects but an individual who has surpassed anything anybody could have imagined for any one player in this game. And I have a feeling with next year when you see some of the young talent that we've acquired the 17 and 7 one loss record here in the month of September. Wow. There is Don't cut your nails. Go man. for your fingernail. There's wild pitch and then there's wild pitch. There was going to be a breaking ball. And as he goes to wrap the wrist. Whoop, it's a warm humid afternoon but. You don't expect. The ball to go there. I have seen it one time I saw. A teammate throw a ball and end up in the dugout. The opposing dugout. That's hard to do. Yeah, I mean, well, what he just did is hard to do, too. I could do that. <laughs> there are very few things I look at down there that I think, you know, I could do that. That's one of them. Two balls, two strikes on Shane Andrews. Now three and two with the number eight hitter Cabrera next. Andrews hitting 237 with 25 home runs, 69 driven in. But don't you get the feeling that the only thing missing this year was the team run? And next year we got the possibility of correcting that and McGuire equaling, breaking, or we'll find out if it's an untouchable plateau. So two on, one out, back to back walks. He's looking at his fingernails too. Sometimes a pitch like that is the one that throws you, know, you over the top. Well, you rip it. You know, you can rip a nail. 
knuckleballers were probably the the ones that their fingernails were most crucial to. Two on, one out. Cabrera takes a ball outside. Knuckleballers and guitar players. You would know about that. Just from friends of mine, not yeah. personally. They put that hardener on on the nail, which tries to toughen it up. Two on, one out, and Cabrera takes a strike, one and one. So it's an effort, and you often hear pitchers who can't pitch because of a blister. Merker. It seems like nothing. Yeah, Merker's one of them. It seems like nothing, but you've got a blister on one of those fingers, you just can't you can't do it. Joe, you know that blister. Cabrera pops it up. Long run in for Jordan. Didn't get a great break, but he'll make the catch. Boy, can he make up some ground in a hurry. Lost his glasses on the trip in, but he'll go back and get them two out. To say there's no that speed, you can cover up uh, first step. Kind of held his ground, maybe even took a step back. But once he gets moving forward, he's got a beat on it, and he'll get there in plenty of time. I was going to say the blister by Merker end up costing him two hundred thousand dollars. Lacked nine innings for a two hundred thousand dollar incentive bonus. And he would have had the start on Sunday, and he would have had the start last night. That's a bad blister. That is a bad blister. Here's the pitcher, Barrett. Nice diving stop by Tatis, the force at second. Boy, has he had a great month defensively at third base. I mean, great. Probably took a run away from the Expos, and the Cardinals lead one zip. We are into the bottom of the second inning with the bottom part of the order coming up for the Cardinals. Cardinals lead one to nothing. He does keep on going and going and going. And in Houston, Sammy Sosa is at the plate right now. We'll tell you what happens with his at bat after he does th something against Mike Hampton. He's not had a lot of success against Hampton in his career. I think two hits and 20 plus at bats. Here's what he's done against Hampton. He's hitting just 074 with zero home runs. And here's what he did in his first at bat in Houston with a couple on. If you're rooting for the Cubs, that's a nice sight. Because that puts Chicago out in front in the first inning in Houston. And there's the difference. I mean, there is the difference with Sosa. That's a, a great at bat, mission accomplished for McGuire. Tony LaRusa said what I never thought. I never thought I would hear him say what he said the other night when he said I would sacrifice a loss right now or I'd sacrifice a win for McGuire to get a home run. I never thought he'd say that and he did. Tony probably never thought he'd ever say that. But he said our number one goal is to get McGuire the home run title the rest of the way. Right. Well I think as much as we all are in the game. Tatis into left center field. That's got a chance at the wall. Goodbye, Fernando Tatis, number eight, and the Cardinals take a two to nothing lead. How exciting is his future in a Cardinal uniform, Al? Well, very exciting, and that home run there probably pretty much cinches the Cardinals will win the home run title. That's number 121. And going into the action, the Braves were second with 115. But Tatis is strong, a little package, his eighth home run with the Cardinals. He had three with Texas earlier. But I think you're going to see that he will be that 20 to 25 type of guy as he develops and gets older. And he's almost basically on pace for that now in a Cardinal uniform by sure. the time that we've seen him. I mean, he's pushing 20. He's probably not there if you measured it out, extended it out, but he's right there, and he is still young. Was he 23 years 23 old? 23 years of age. You know, we've seen the ability to be a gold glove at third base. He's got a lot of pop in his bat. 383 feet with his eighth home run. Ordaz trying to follow suit pops up into left for Derek May and that's the first out here in the Cardinals second. We'll bring in the pitcher Matt Morris. Who as he walks to the plate puts the nail clippers back into his back pocket. What do you think did he go in and clip the nails after the half inning. Might have. After I, think, that wild I, pitch. I, I think that he probably did. Not responding to the 
crawl on the scoreboard. You will never forget that word, will you? One out, nobody on for Matt Morris. A good swing, strike one. Matt is hitting just 0-71. Two of the Cardinals' best hitting pitchers are hitting nothing. Morris and Osborne. Strike two. That good hitting pitcher, but being cheated out of a swing. And now takes a ball up and away, one and two. So the Cubs got the one run in the first inning at Chicago or at Houston against the Astros as Morris strikes out, second strikeout for Thurman. And now the Astros bat in the bottom of the first inning. If the Cubs win, they guarantee themselves of at the very worst a one game playoff with San Francisco. They also eliminate the New York Mets in the process. San Francisco will be playing at Colorado. Scheduled to pitch in that game. Kirk Reeder from Hoylton, Illinois against Jamie Wright for Colorado. That will start later out in the mountain time zone as Eli Marrero takes a strike. Eli hitting 247 with four home runs, 20 RBIs. So both Sosa and McGuire in their first at bats today singled into center. And the Giants, who have won nine out of ten, will might have to make it 10 out of 11 if they're going to force the playoff into left field for May it hung up and off the bat of Marrero he's the final out as we go to the third inning the Cardinals add a run got one in the first got one in the second a loud run off the bat of Tatis two nothing welcome back to the ballpark Cardinals have a two nothing lead let's check in with Bob Ramsey's he's up with Ron Ebmeyer the fireworks the power maniac man <laughs> Thanks, guys. You may call him the fireworks guy. I prefer ordinance engineer. Ron, uh, you've had a lot of fun this year. You just got to bust off a few for uh, Fernando Tatis. I was checking it out. That's fun. It's uh, it's uh, been a great season. It's a lot of fun this year. Yeah, I'm wondering. Now, did you plan for McGuire to hit this many home runs, or did you have to uh, call for more ordinance during the season? I've been calling quite a bit for more ordinance. We've never had anything like this before. Got anything special for tonight? Uh, after the game, we're going to do something a little special. Uh, when Mark receives the St. Louis Award. Ron, thanks a lot. Have fun and keep it loud. Anytime. Thank you. Ron Ebmeyer back. His fireworks all over the ballpark. All right. Thank you, Bob. As a perfect bunt laid down by Wilton Guerrero goes for a hit and an error on the throw. Runner at second with nobody out for the Expos here in the third. Tatis was in, but not in for the perfect bunt. Bare hand kind of rolls up into his palm. He throws off balance. It's in the dirt, gets by McGuire. So a single and E5 puts Guerrero out of second base. And Terry Jones digs in. We'll see how he tries to get the runner over to third. It's Guerrero with nobody out at second. And that's out of play off to the left. One ball, one strike. Terry Jones with runners in scoring position. Driven in 13, but his average is no good. Breaking ball for a strike, one and two. And the next from Morris, grounded to the right side. Jones does his job. McEwing makes the play. One away. Over to third is Guerrero for Derek May. Folks, guests appearing at Cardinal Baseball receive a gift certificate to Krieger's Pub and Grill, St. Louis's neighborhood bar and grill. Visit any one of their six locations. And now, by the time next year we're reading that in 1999, they might have seven or eight. Hey, I know locations. they're building one down in Arnold now. So there's seven. Here's a runner at third one out for Derek May. Ball one. Now did you go to the one at Warson Woods the other day? Did I say I would? Yes. I did. Were you 
hounded by autograph seekers when you walked in? Just when I went to pay the bill. I was hounded by the uh, waitress. Pitches up 2-0. Morris trying to strand that runner at third. There's one out. The RBI chance for May, who's driven in only 15. And it gets much more difficult with the next guy, and Morris has run it to 3 0. Vladimir Guerrero is next. May swinging on 3 0, makes it 3 1. 178 at bats this year for Derek May and only 15 RBIs. Not a good percentage for a big man who first got to the major league level. A lot of people projected stardom. The 3 1. He walked him. And it's first and third with one out for Vladimir Guerrero. Third walk handed out by Morris on a hot day in St. Louis. And Matt really not himself right now. And Some guys can love to pitch that final game of the season. Others find it's just a major distraction. And when you're walking people, that's just lack of concentration. Vladimir Guerrero now, he's driven in 108. Walk the guy that's driven in 15 to get to Guerrero hitting 323. Make it 109 with a base hit into left field, and Vladimir didn't waste any time. That makes it a two to one game here in the third inning as brother. Wilton Guerrero touches home plate. Boy, he's good. Well, he's just a young emerging star. And I 38 home runs, 109 RBIs. He's like 22 years of age. He doesn't get cheated with his swing either. So Vladimir gets the hit. Wilton touches home. That combination. Produces the first run of the day for Montreal. Two on one out now for Brad Fulmer. 273 hitter. Good pitch. Strike one. Fulmer to 44 doubles. Trailing Biggio, but he set a new Expos record for doubles by a rookie. That's back in strike two. Fulmer struck out his first time and he's set up to do it again with two on one out. Well, that's what Morris is hoping for the double play ball. And he has Fulmer set up at 0 and 2. Jammed him. That should be the second out. The runners will stay put. Jordan. Makes the catch, two down, first and second for Michael Barrett. I like the pitchers. Maddox is one of them. But you don't waste a lot of pitches, and Morris went right after Fulmer. Well, it comes right in on him, ties him up. You know, Red at one time, Shandy said a policy that any pitcher gave up an 0 2 base hit was fined $50. And that was back when $50 meant $50. But you know, Bob Gibson said, you know, do I get credit for every 0 2 out? Or that strike out? That, right? <laughs> well, but I mean, it's one thing, and sometimes, you know, you'll make a, a great pitch and somebody will throw a bat and get a base hit. But if you throw a ball right down the middle or somebody hits the ball extremely hard, you know, there is a there's some validity to finding guys. One ball, one strike. Two on with two out, a two to one Cardinal lead here in the third, and everybody awaiting McGuire's next at bat, which will happen in the bottom of this inning. Strike two on Barrett as Morris tries to strand a couple. You know, Tom and Marcia Keller are hoping that Mark McGuire will help them celebrate their 20th wedding anniversary with a home run today. Congratulations to the Kellers. Ball two strikes on Michael Barrett. Two on, two out. Two and two. This crowd fanning itself while inside in the air conditioned Trans World Dome down the street. The Rams trail by seven at the half to the Cardinals. Mm. 
Two on, two out, two balls, two strikes. Michael Barrett. In the right center field, that'll tie the game. Jordan over to cut it off, makes a good play. They'll bring Guerrero to the plate, now hold him. Pete McCann gave him the hold sign late. It's a 2-2 score here in the third, and what a good play by Jordan. And Brian can play center field. There's that breaking ball again, but just sort of hanging up there. Morris not real happy with the way he's performing right now. Going to get down, plug the gap. May will come around and tie the score at two all. And you still have the ability with two outs here, runners in second and third, to keep it tied. Shane Andrews stands in his way. Strike one as he went after that ball. Out of the strike zone, on one. Michael Barrett got that RBI double. His second RBI of the year. He's a good looking young player. Here's a guy that they say Barrett may replace. Shane Andrews at third base next year. Second and third, two down. And the 0-2 to Andrews. Wasted and smothered by Marrero. Here's the one two pitch two and two. So Morris is laboring here. As we check on the wild card teams Atlanta taking care of New York Chicago leading in the second at Houston. And San Francisco and Colorado just getting underway as Andrews fouls it out of play off to the right. What an advantage San Francisco will have only if the Cubs lose before their game is over. Only if. Be able to be relaxed, go out and play, and know that at the very worst, they're in a playoff before the playoffs. Here's the 2 2. Andrews hits it a ton down the line, hooking foul. Wow, that'll give you a good idea how strong he is. That was off the cement above the stadium club. He hit his 25th home run of the year in yesterday afternoon's contest. Looks like it's going to go foul, which and it keeps on hooking to the left of the pole and is a foul ball. Now the 2-2, breaking ball and a chance for Tatis. Takes his time and the throw to end the inning. But the Expos get two to tie. McEwing, Drew, McGuire coming up. Bottom of the third of a 2-2 game. like there's going to be some fireworks now. What are you doing tonight? Helen and I don't have any fire. Great! Smokey and his wife are coming to my house for dinner. Would you like to join us? That'd be great! Great! If I can beat the traffic, I'll pick up some Bud Light! Bud Light! Looks like you're out of here! I'll see you and the wife tonight! For the great taste that will fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. You have a beautiful home here! Well, thank you very much! Can't Hello? get there in time. Dial star 69 to get the call back. <laughs> it's only 50 cents per use. What is he? <laughs> Introducing a sports sedan that sets a new standard of performance and a touring sedan that sets a new standard of luxury. Here they are. Introducing the new TL with the satellite linked navigation system from Acura. Coming up tonight at 10 o'clock, Fox Sports News primetime on the Fox Sports Net. And you will know the wild card situation. You'll know the home run situation. We're going to know a lot more about the home run situation in a matter of moments as McEwing, Drew, and McGuire bat. People are getting greedy. Why not? 2 2 game, bottom of the third.
McEwing singled his first time up, moved to third on a hit by McGuire and scored on an infield out by Jordan. So he's now three out of 18 in the big leagues as he waits for the 0 1 pitch from Mike Thurman. That's foul. Cardinals need a couple of guys like this, don't they? Those rah rah type spark plugs that even on the bench. I think so. You know, you never know. They kind of energize their teammates and you always know when they you put them out there, they're going to hustle. Chased it on 0 and 2, but the foul tip hit the dirt before Barrett picked it up. So McEwing stays alive. Oh and 2 the count. Drew will follow, then McGuire. As McEwing is hit on the forearm by that pitch up and in. Joe reaches base for the second time in this game. That'll bring in J.D. Drew. Gonna step into it, and there you see the forearm. Trying to be aggressive, come in, then try to pull back. You're gonna be that kind of hustling, gritty ball player. You take those share of opportunities to get on base ahead of uh, and be the potential winning or go-ahead run. J.D. takes a strike over the outside corner. Drew popped up. First time up. Runners on. Great numbers. The base is empty. Great numbers. Overall hitting 394 and a check on McEwing. The man waits on deck. Big Mac with 68. 0 and 1 the count. One ball one strike. J.D. Drew with one on, nobody out on one ball, one strike, and another check on McEwing. The Rawlings big stick in the hands of Mark McGuire. It's pretty good pop for Rawlings there, isn't it? Pitch up and in, two and one. Talking to Ted Sizemore the other day, and he said that he was one of the ones he said he won't be the, it's single handedly but he said that he was one of the ones that made the decision when Mark was on the Olympic team to sign him to a Rawlings contract. I think it's paid off. Absolutely. Here's the two one to Drew up and in three and one. Why well, I'm excited to watch J.D. Drew over an entire season which I don't think it's Ridiculous to think that'll happen next year. I mean, this guy's one of the best players to come along in a long time, and he's showing a lot in very little time. As McEwing runs, the pitch is a strike, and just like that, the bases are empty with one out. Tag by Cabrera, quick tag on a bounced throw by Michael Barrett, one away. It looks like he goes in the back end of the. Uh, he was, he was safe. safe, no question about it. Watch the lead leg. Comes up, but the toe got to the bag. Now Drew pops it a mile high off to the right side, and it will stay playable. Wilton Guerrero is there, and Wilton pulls it in two away. That means McGuire will bat to the bases empty and two out here in the third. Baseballs for the young right hander Mike Thurman. A new supply to the home plate umpire Rich Reeker is Mark McGuire, who singled into center. 
His 61st single of the year back in the first inning digs in for the second time. I guess a little up for ball one. You knew it was coming. That's the one you want to swing at. McGuire up to 296 with the average and 68 in home runs. Wow, what a swing. One ball, one strike as he just unloaded on that pitch. Well, he took the hanging breaking ball because he was looking for the fastball. He got it, just missed it. A little bit underneath it, though. It was up a little bit. Now the 1 1. Into left field. Back at the track at the wall. Historic number 69. Number 69 for Mark McGuire. Hanging breaking ball. Opens with the hips. Down a little bit where he catches it on the upswing. And history is made once again. A double curtain call on the final day of 1998. Jordan, one ball, one strike. Well, I sat in the stands Friday night, and you could just tell the electricity in the ballpark. When he does something, when he comes to bat, just the buzz after a home run, it is something that I've never, ever seen before. Al, every once in a while, I think announcers get caught up in saying, making too big of a deal out of something or overstating something as you look at this 377 footer for number 69. We wait the 2 1 pitch to Jordan 2 and 2. There is no bigger clutch performer in sports today than Mark McGuire. You keep throwing this party day after day. He hits the home run on Tuesday night on national television a few Tuesdays ago for number 62. Sosa hits number 66. McGuire comes right back with 66 and he's added three more. And he has 69. Cardinal fans, they've gotten accustomed to this. Every time they see that swing, the extension, the follow through. I mean. A check on the shortstop Cabrera. A high throw. And the inning is over. Mike Thurman has made the list. Number 69 for Mark McGuire. And at least a couple more at bats the rest of this afternoon. Another standing ovation for Big Mac. After this swing, the result 69 home runs in 1998. More to come from Bush Stadium after this as we go to the fourth. Oh, by the way, the Cardinals have regained the lead 3-2. Three to two, but the numbers that matter most around here, 69 to 66. Mark McGuire leading by three. Thanks to this swing. Straight up, Al, and just kept going to the point where the left fielder, Derek May, didn't even move. And Joe, how do you open up so quick on that pitch inside and not pull it foul? So 
Sammy Sosa has had his second at bat in Houston. They're in the third inning, and here's what he did in his second at bat after singling his first time. He strikes out. I don't think it's a stretch to say that as Orlando Cabrera hits one to deep left, and that's gone. Orlando Cabrera goes deep to tie this game as Cabrera gets his third. It's a 3-3 score in the fourth. I'm just going to say, Al, I don't think it's a stretch to think that a lot of the Cardinal fans are out here who don't have ties to the Giants or to the Mets are probably rooting for the Cubs to get to the postseason this year. As we watch the high pitch, and that was definitely, Al, a mistake from Matt Morris. Yeah, he's really having trouble with a lot of his off-speed pitches, particularly the curveball, trying to get it down. Oh, look, Cabrera's going to do a curtain call. <laughs> Crowd reaction not belated for the curtain call. It's <laughs> they show that Sosa struck out in his next at bat on the board here. And, and I don't think fans are trying to be disrespectful to Sammy. I think that just everyone as a Cardinal fan wants to see and make sure that McGuire is the home run champion. But don't you run into a lot of people around here, diehard Cardinal fans that would like to see the Cubs get to the postseason? I do. Well, they uh, they come to me with that approach, and I quickly uh, put them in their place. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. You know what? Cha Cha Cepeda. He's made a great compliment to both McGuire and to Sosa. And I'll tell you in a second. Mike Thurman grounds to short. Look and listen at McGuire's number 69 as he touched it off in the bottom of the third. charge he has made since Friday night. Cepeda said and there you see 69 and a half. But Cepeda said you know we knew McGuire was a great great home run hitter. But he said he has gotten so much joy out of watching Sosa and really the pride his Hispanic pride of seeing what Sosa has done and how he's handled things. He said it's been so marvelous for the Hispanic world because it's dispelled so many myths that you know they couldn't talk they couldn't you know they were sultry they you know couldn't open up in public they, they couldn't respond to pressure and he is 100 percent correct good throw there by Luis Ordaz as Wilton Guerrero grounds to short no doubt about that but when you look at people have talked about it but when you look at the home run chase in the second half of the year it's really two different types of chases. I mean, Sammy Sosa is still a guy that pitchers think they can get out. And I talked to Dave Duncan about it when the Cubs were here. So we're not going to pitch around Sosa because we feel like we can get him out if we make the pitches we need to make. Meanwhile, McGuire, I think, is still more recognized as the classic home run hitter. Here's a shot into left center off the bat of Terry Jones, and he's had a decent afternoon. He's on. After moving a runner over in his last at bat, he has a two out single here in the fourth. It's really two different chases, and it's incredible that Sosa has been able to keep pace with that man who now has 69, three more than Sam. Yeah, and, and I think when you, first of all, you look at his size, you say, okay, here's a home run here. But if people would only understand how Mark has advanced as a hitter, then you understand how remarkable his feat has been. And Sosa too. He's matured as a hitter. But now Mark McGuire is not only the most prolific home run hitter. He's just a darn good hitter. And he's closed some of the holes in his swing. Derek May now takes a pitch down and away for ball one with a man at first two out in a 3-3 game in the fourth. So Matt Morris coming off very good back to back outings is not all that sharp here this afternoon so much so that there's action now for the Cardinals in their bullpen. Jones now running 2 and 0. Yeah, that was kind of a half-hearted pitch out. It was a pitch out but he really didn't get it out there and he changed his 
delivery to the point that a good base runner would know that it was a pitch out and not run. Now the runner goes May pops it up third base side playable for Tatis it looks like and back there to make the catch to end the inning they're going to call fan interference and rule the out. Now that could have gone either way. We've already had one fan interference call go against the Cardinals. In the judgment of Brian Gorman, Tatis would have made this catch had the fan not interfered. Looks like a pretty good call. Sports Midwest. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you in part by your local Chrysler and Plymouth dealers. By Pizza Hut, home of America's favorite fan pizza. By Auto Tire. Auto Tire, the home of bottom line pricing. When is enough enough? 69 and counting with at least two more at bats in this game as Gant takes a pitch up and in. Ball one. I said earlier, probably had a, a multiple home run game inning. He did. He called it. Talked about 70 also. Gant rips it fair. Past third in a tie game to start the fourth inning. Ronnie has a double and a good start to the inning as Gant keeps that average over 300 for the month of September. It's right inside the third base bag. Looked like it was going to go all the way to the corner. It didn't get it. Got caught up on the left field stands. But either way, a double for Ron Gant and a good start here in the fourth. Here's Tatis, who is homered and is only at bat, in his eighth as a Cardinal. One on, nobody out. Tatis looking for the RBI. He asked for Tat and Fernando here to. Run him to third. Or the way they got him defensively, he could hit one right to old straightaway shortstop. Now they're backing up a little bit on the left side. Time called at the plate by Rich Reeker. Under its second is Gant with nobody out. Tatis takes the ball down and in. Fernando's driven in 26. There's action now for the Expos in their bullpen. I'll let Morris go at least one more to get five innings under his belt. Thurman has slowed it considerably. He's trying to figure out Thurman for the second time today. Makes it low, 2 0. On deck is Ordaz, and then Morris's spot. Bollinger is out in the Expos bullpen. Richard Hidalgo is just singled for the Houston Astros, and they've tied the Cubs 1 1 in the third. The count on Fernando Tatis. 3 0. Mike Thurman trying to get around a leadoff double, and he's not doing a very good job of it. 3 0 on the next hitter, Tatis. A strike three and one. Pick off play back at second. Too late as Gant gets back in. Mark McGuire will 
enjoy a much needed rest at the end of the season. He is going to hide for a couple of weeks at some point and just recoup. He's going to need that just to clear his mind. Oh. Tatis does his job, and the fans will appreciate that. He moves the runner over. Gannett third, one out. Go ahead, run 90 feet away for Ordaz. We'll see if he can bring him in. Cardinal fans, this break in the action is brought to you by Bud Light. The great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. They saw it. They can say they were here. Number 69. Runner at third, and Ordaz, who's been swinging the bat much better lately, Al, is going to try to bring a runner in, and the infield is back up the middle. A little ground ball would do the trick. Try and get his hands a little bit away from his body. Strike one from Thurman. Felt that major league hitters could just jam him up and in. You can do that to most guys, but he's on the bat pretty good to the tone of Hit in 11 of his last 13 games at a 375 clip. Runner at third, one out. And Ordaz takes one up and in, one and one a moment ago. Mark McGuire and Tom Lampkin. Lampkin's never acknowledged one of his home runs yet, has he? Maybe he just did. Maybe, Maybe yeah, that's the reaction. Yeah. I think he'd wait till another bat or two. What does he come in? He just says whatever. 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 Gannett at third with one out, one ball, one strike on Ordaz. Two one. Pat Kelly and Tom Lampkin have become very close friends with Mark McGuire and really, I guess, uh, done a great job of the balancing net. I think the, and I've said it before a number of times, the addition of Pat Kelly. Is immeasurable, is immeasurable not just for the Cardinals and what Kelly brings, but what he does for McGuire. Bad break for the Cardinals as Ordaz hit it hard. The line drive caught by Cabrera. There's a spot where not having the infield in pays off for Montreal. Cabrera back, able to get up, make the catch, and keep the runner at third, two out now. I almost wonder if Felipe felt that he wouldn't hit it hard enough to be right at somebody. So they haven't played back and not going on contact, or maybe they were, but Ronnie had the ability to get back. Close play. Surprising to me, at least, that DeShields is batting here for Morris, so Matt is finished after four. Runner at third, two out, and Delino trying to put the cards on top, takes a strike. Frascatori will be the new Cardinal pitcher. Well, I think it's one of those situations where you try and get a win. You know Matt Morris is not performing as well as he could so you don't want to give him a loss. There's no way you can get a win but you don't want to give him a loss. Pitch was up and the Shields is in the hole 0 and 2. There's Frascatori. It's been a real workhorse this year but I think it's also a situation where it allows Delino to at least make an appearance here in front of the home crowd because his status is very much up in the air for next year. Yeah this could be his final game in a Cardinal uniform. As it could be for Jordan, the Shields pops it up. Into center should do it. A leadoff double. The Cardinals do nothing with it. Jones pulls it in. The Shields is gone, and we go to the fifth inning. Montreal and St. Louis tied 3 3. We move into the top of the fifth inning. New pitcher, Frascatori for the Cardinals, but right now standing by with Bob Ramsey, Cardinal GM, Walt Jockety. Bob? Thanks very much, Joe. And Walt, first of all, we were just talking about. Everybody's used all the superlatives for Mark McGuire. He does it again today. It, it leaves most of us speechless. It does. You know, it's it's just it's been fun to watch all year, and it's you know when you're involved in every day like we are, sometimes you don't really appreciate it as much as you, we will when we sit back, and reflect on it this winter. But I mean, this is the special part of history that we may never see again. So it's really it's been it's been a phenomenal year for us. The magnificence of the present, yet you've already got the future up here on the big league club as well. J.D. Drew has this been a, a story that 
has unfolded just like you'd wanted in September? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it, what, it, what it's done is given us, uh, you know, something to look to for next year. I mean, J.D. Drew, Fernando Tatis, Eli Marrero. I mean, these young guys are, have really done a nice job for us. Give us, uh, uh, you know, some direction for next year and, and give us an idea what we have to do to to uh, what holes now we have. And it's uh, it's going to be fun to watch. Guys. Drew has just been, you know, he's, he's fun to watch. And every time he, he does something else to amaze us. And while uh, most of us have, will be able to, I should say, this winter to reflect and, and just look back on the season, your work really begins in earnest tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's exactly right. Tomorrow night I'm, I'm going to wrap up some things here in the office tomorrow, and then tomorrow night fly down to Florida for the Instruction League and meet with our Major League Scouts and start preparing for next year. And, and uh, it, it really doesn't let up. Strong finish uh, for the Cardinals. We'll carry it over to next year. Thanks, Walt. Thank you very much. Walt Jockety, Cardinals General Manager. Back to you, Joe. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Walt. Vladimir Guerrero in a 3-3 game leads off the fifth, and Frascatore gets it past him for strike one. We understand Sammy Sosa is in the on-deck circle. In Houston, Cubs and Astros tied 1-1, and they are in the fourth inning. San Francisco and Colorado, nothing, nothing, bottom of the second, and the Mets are about finished. Unless both the Cubs and the Giants lose, the Mets trail 6-2 in the eighth inning at Atlanta. Hey, this 69th appearance for uh, Frascatore doesn't have quite the same significance no. as McGuire. But it's a career high for Frascatore. Leads the staff with 69. Also leads in innings pitched out of the bullpen. Still 0-2. Get an, an emerging star right here in Guerrero. I'll remind, I'll tell you a story of that your father, the great Jack Buck, said today. We were standing with Walt, and we saw all the media circus in the clubhouse and out of, out uh, around the dugout area. Jack said, "If I was J.D. Drew, I'd look at all this and say, I don't know if I want to be a star." Here's he. Pitch and a swing and a miss by Guerrero and Vladimir is retired for the second time today. Good start by Frascatori. Yeah, it has been wearing and that's the amazing part of the year for Mark McGuire with all of the focus and all of the questions he's been able to keep his concentration. <laughs> that is perfect. Well, you know what happens what about the time he starts relaxing. Is now he's going he's to reflect on what happened this season, and that's going to keep him awake. Be able to go to sleep. Pitch low and away, ball one to Brad Fulmer. So McGuire this year has set, tied, or broken 29 Cardinal, National League, or Major League records. 1 0 pitch, Fulmer takes a strike. Those are just the ones that have been kept and that we know about. The season has been so special. Do any of the 29 records have any, anything to do with 62 or more home runs and only 61 singles? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many difference. And then he got a message. <laughs> Somebody threw a paper airplane all the way from probably upper deck to his feet. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Homer pops it up. Good start for Frascatori. Ordaz goes back to get it. Two gone for the Expos here in the fifth. Here's more history for you. Right there it is from the upper deck to the feet of Mark McGuire. You can tell that wasn't a Boeing. What you don't see in there is the pen. <laughs> Somebody asking him for an autograph from the upper deck long distance during the game. Now Barrett a check swing foul strike one. Rascatori looks for a perfect inning and this might be one of those games where Cardinals empty the bullpen and give everybody a crack in an inning. Got a while to recoup before the next important outing. Final day of the regular season. One ball, one strike on Barrett.
Cubs have taken the lead three to one in Houston on a two run double by Terry Mulholland. So he's doing it on the mound and he's doing it at the plate. He has six strikeouts in the game through three innings. I think Mulholland the last couple uh, outings hasn't endeared himself to the Cubs. He found himself a job either there or definitely someplace for next season. What you have to do is during that pennant stretch or you perform at that time people want you. Ball and two strikes Barrett comes up empty in a perfect first inning for Frascatore two strikeouts the Expos went in order. Morero McEwing Drew maybe McGuire for the cards in the fifth. Well gentlemen there's been a lot of us and we've seen a lot of baseball but the guy that's brought it all to us and seen a lot is Frank Muriel 47 years Cardinal TV Frank unbelievable. Yes this is the greatest year I've ever had I mean this is uh, I'm retiring but I'm going out with a big big smile I really am it's really been exciting. Now when you started with Cardinal TV it was pretty much just sketch artists right and then you'd well, hand them in I tell you when we started our cameras were black and white and we had bullseyes on them in a real I mean like in a Grumman fighter I mean so, <laughs> so, so it's been a long ways back there you know have you seen anything like this in all your 47 I've never never seen anything like this this is the first for me I mean you know I've done a lot of baseball but this is the first for me Frank for all television fans who may not have known you but you've been being, bringing Cardinal pictures to them for many years and for everybody who's worked with you congratulations have a great retirement thank you Bobby Frank Muriel back to the booth all right, thank you. Congratulations to Frank, a wonderful man, an institution here at the ballpark, and he will retire to a life of playing the bongo drums. How many people know that? A Monica. Both. He plays the bongos, too. I've seen it in action. We are joined by a very uh, distinguished guest, and he became distinguished about half an hour ago as a pitch caught the inside corner. To my right, to Al's left, is Kerry Woodson. Yes. Congratulations, my Thanks. man. You caught number 69, and he, Al, he's shaking. He still is shaking. I was commenting about that. Well, congratulations as Marrero comes up empty. One and two. You got a little owie. Uh, yeah, got a little scrape on the hand. But, I mean, you know, you, Natalie, does Natalie have Band-Aids that are that attractive? It is so cute. What is that, Aquaman? What's uh, I'm not real sure. Fred and Barney? <laughs> well, I think you, it's uh, the Great Bear. Well, here we go. Here's a look at your replay. Great. Kerry Woodson, watch the monitor here as the ball goes into the stand somewhere down there. There you are. Then now there are the two guys. You've got it on tape. There's your buddy right That's next him. to you who was on top of you. He got he got the tickets uh, about two months ago. He got the tickets, so yeah. he, he felt like he had the <laughs> justification to jump on top of you and try to hurt you. Well, protecting me from everybody else. <laughs> well, what was it like when the uh, the balls coming your way? There you are. What was it? What was it like with a ball coming your way? Did you did you think I got a shot at this thing? I I, I, I thought I had a shot. Wasn't real sure. I didn't I didn't know if it was going to get up that far, and I I just reached out, closed my eyes, and. Next thing I know, it's in my mitt. All right, Kerry, what are you going to do with it? I, I, I don't really know. And, and that's fair. You know, we're not going to put any pressure on you. I've talked to my dad, and he said, don't make any rush decisions. You sound pretty nervous, so. <laughs> we <laughs> can attest to that. You're doing great on TV. Well, thanks. This is nothing to you now. you got Old 69 hat. in your pocket. Yeah. You don't care. J.D. Drew walks to the plate now with two out, nobody on. And let me just at least Okay. Fit. He's a great young player. <laughs> okay, I was, looking, I was looking for the mark. Joe, and here it is right there. It says 72. That was the distinguishing mark, so they knew that this was the official ball. I thought you were looking for the blood on the ball from <laughs> Terry. My dad, about two months ago, had called. He called 69 and thought that was going to be the one. Really? Yeah. And so, you get 69. And I caught it. So I called him up, and he, he didn't believe me. I kept saying I caught it, and he's like, you're lying, you're lying. Well, Dad, he got it. Look, he's on TV. <laughs> Two out, nobody on for Drew. First pitch of ball, now a strike. So, uh... Well, we will let you look at this. He's carrying now. He's got a, a throng of people that follow him around. He's got police officers. He's got everything. My two policemen, they helped me out of there. Yeah, those are your heroes. They now. are. They got me out of there safely. J.D. Drew pops it down the line. It's a fair ball. Drew into second with a double, and that means Mark McGuire will come to the plate here in the fifth inning. Well, Kerry Woodson. 
throw the headset down and go back to your seat. You got a chance for two today. I don't know if I can get back there that quickly. Thanks for coming. On. Thanks for coming on the air with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Gary Woodson in his possession, home run ball number 69. And he hasn't stopped shaking since. So a runner at second with two out, and Mark McGuire digs in for the third time today. He's singled, he's homered. And he bats with Drew at second and two out. We're only in the fifth inning. He could conceivably get two more at bats after this one. Here we go. Looking for number 70. He hit two home runs here yesterday against Montreal. And he takes a ball high. We got our good luck charm. Kerry Woodson in the booth up here with us. He caught 69, and we wait for the 1-0 pitch. Here it is. Oh, no. Thurman's already on the list. But, you know, give him credit, because now he's trying. He's still trying to go after him. He's throwing fastballs. He's trying to throw him in an area which would be an area to retire Mark McGuire. He's still competing against him. Here's the 2-0. on the back of young Mike Thurman. People ask me all the time, where would you pitch McGuire? Up and in. That's all he's trying to do. Will he swing on 3-0? and all? Lately he has been. Earlier in the year he did not. Head high. And the crowd gets on Mike Thurman as McGuire draws a walk. So that walk extends Mark's National League to 162 and a ball right up there a good pitch La Russa can't be happy with that but it was not intentional at all he just wants to make sure Mark doesn't get hurt I believe 162 ties him with Ted Williams the records 170 by Babe Ruth back in 1923 in one year Williams had 162 and now Mark McGuire does this year in walks. Jordan pops it up. And that'll do it for the Cardinals here in the fifth inning. We go to the sixth. Crowd booing. They wanted number 70. They might get a shot at it later. It's 3-3 after five. Hey, I'm Tiger Woods, and I got Fox Sports News in my bag. Our Southwestern Bell trivia question, who holds the Major League record for the most home runs at home in a season? I know the answer. We're looking at it? Yep. I think. I think he did that about three or four years ago. <laughs> I mean, three or four home runs ago. Everybody waiting for 70. McGuire ought to get two more at bats, I would think. Well, let's count down. Let's do it, shall we, for the final time this year? Cardinals are guaranteed of getting McGuire to the plate one more time, and it wouldn't take much of a rally in each of the next two innings to get him up there a couple more times. But definitely one more at bat for McGuire coming your way. It's not McGuire. Nothing in one. The count now one ball, one strike for Frascatori on Shane Andrews in a 3 3 game, sixth inning. Get a base hit through the left side. So Andrews has hit the ball well the last couple of days. Today he's walked, grounded out, nearly bombed a home run, and now singled. Southwestern Bell trivia question Who holds the major league record for most home runs at home in a season? Hank Greenberg, 39. 19 on the road. At 39 at home. He had 19 on the road. Mark McGuire has 37 this year. So maybe he'll tie it. For those two more plate appearances. One on, nobody out. Cabrera bunts it foul. 
Cabrera homered his last time up. Then he took a curtain call while nobody paid attention, and now he tries to bunt. Trying to bunt Andrews down to second. Definitely one more at bat for McGuire. And then I would think, depending on how the game is unfolding and what the situation is, it might be the final day of the year. Go back, take your position, and we'll send in the replacement, and you get the ovation. Marrero throws to second, and Ordaz missed it. Another mistake by Luis Ordaz, and the runners end up at second and third as Marrero shot a bullet down to second. And Ordaz has struggled and struggled and struggled at short. Joe, I think that's why shortstop, finding a shortstop is the first priority. Took his eye off it a little bit, trying to stretch, and it goes off the top of his glove. Nothing wrong with the throw. A little bit high, but still, you catch that, it's perfect. So, no sacrifice. Fielder's choice, and a great scoring opportunity for the Expos here with nobody out, and Jose Vidro will pitch in. Second and third, nobody out. Infield creeps in as Vidro bats for Thurman. And a strike from Frascatore. So the sacrifice, the error. Did they give a sacrifice? I, We're waiting. I guess he just I, gave it right now. Okay, I thought they said no sacrifice. Now I think they may have changed it. We'll find out. It should have been just, just a straight error. It seems like you should have given it a sacrifice. You could give it a sacrifice and an E6, which will well, allow the runners to advance. Now, it wouldn't be a sacrifice because he would have been out in second. Right. Yeah, so no sacrifice. That's what I'm guessing, but I, you don't know around here. <laughs> Check swing grounder. We're going to have a toss to the plate, and out is Andrews as Barrero hangs on. One away. How can he not slide? Well, trying to go after the, the man. It is a tag play, so it would have been probably much easier for him to have a chance to score. He's ahead of Tatis. Here's the throw, and the throw, see, right up there is high. If you slide, he probably couldn't catch the ball and get down and tag him. But he runs right into it. And enough time for Marrero to recover and hold on. Now first and third one out. There's no sacrifice if you're scoring with us on the ball. The bunt by Cabrera. It's just a straight error. And there's a double play ball. Ordaz flips out over to first. Got them both. And after having second and third, nobody out. John Frascatore does an incredible job with the help from his defense. Gets out of trouble and keeps it a 3-3 game. Still leading by three over Sammy Sosa. Here's what Sosa did in his last at bat. Courtesy of WGN Sports, and we thank them very much as Sammy got it off the end of the bat. Rather deep center field, but no home runs in three at bats. And fans say sorry, Sammy. Carl Pavano, talented, talented young right hander, takes over. He beat the Mets in a start his last time out. Last time out, you're right. Right before they came here. He is a starter. This is his first relief pitcher all year. So you almost have to believe that he almost asked Felipe to pitch this final game or be part of this history. He was acquired from Boston in the Pedro Martinez deal. What's what's wrong with Gant well, here? He wasn't ready. I think he asked for time. So he asked for time, but he was not granted time. Rich Reeker does not grant him time and that's the way it's supposed to be done. Mm. Here's the 0 1 pitch to Gant. One ball, one strike. Ron leading off. Now it's a question of whether the Cardinals can. Regain the lead. Gant with a one-handed swing flies to the track in left. And he's one out of three. Well, looking up on the scoreboard, Al, I see the Giants have come up with three runs of the third inning and lead at Colorado three to nothing. It might very well come down to a one-game playoff tomorrow at Wrigley. That would be great. Remember the last time? Our 
last time to my memory, the Bucky Dead home run off of Mike Torres. 1978. Tatis with one out, nobody on. I was with Kansas City at that time, and we're waiting around to see who we play the next day. Boston blew a double digit lead late in the season. Yankees just kept on playing pressure baseball every day. They played the first game and they just killed us big and they didn't know they were playing the playoffs. They just all they knew was one more big game. Out of play off the bat of Tati still on two. The final attendance figure here at home, 3,195,021. Strike three on Tatis, two out. Cardinals end out 14 straight sellouts the entire month of September's home schedule. So a new home attendance record. They had a new road attendance record this season. Fans have been treated to some of the best baseball, most exciting baseball, and I think a glimpse of what the future lies is going to be very promising. Two out, nobody on for Ordaz, who takes a ball outside. Al, would you trade what McGuire has done for a team? Pennant race and a chance to go to the postseason, or would you keep it as it is and watch history unfold with one man? That's a dangerous foul and didn't hurt anybody. One and one off the bat of Bordet. Well, Joe, that's a great question. And as we go around and everyone says, boy, you must have had fun broadcasting the Cardinal games this year. Well, we really did, but there's always an emptiness because what McGuire did is phenomenal, but the team was a disappointment. So there is that void. I just will change it around and say next year we get to do it all over again with McGuire and the team wins. Ground ball to second off the bat of Ordaz and a good first relief appearance by Pavano. He goes through the Cardinals one two three and we go to the seventh inning. It'll be Terry Jones Derek May Vladimir Guerrero for the Expos in a three three game. Fox Sports Midwest is pleased to congratulate Mary Vogel and Mary Labarge. Mary Labarge. Today's Cardinals super fan. They have season tickets by the Cardinals bullpen. Mark DeJohn fans. It's been a truly unbelievable season, and the Post Dispatch would like to join hands with you on a magical trip to relive it. Post Dispatch 1998 season wrap up section. Get your copy in next Sunday's Post Dispatch. Harry Jones will bat against Frascatore. Dean Renicky wants to say hi to Elaine Robbins. Got all kinds of wishes up here. We probably won't get them all in, but uh, big get well wishes to Janet Hassler. She recovering at St. Joseph's Hospital in Kirkwood. I have back surgery there. That's a great hospital. They'll take good care of you, Janet. Pitch low from Frascatore. Don Frascatore has done a terrific job in two innings. Jones takes a strike. It's one and one. Frascatore perfect in the fifth inning, and then in the sixth, he allowed a leadoff hit. An error hurt him. Second and third, nobody out, and he got out of it. Two and one on Terry Jones. I could fly, Joe. Some people. Commented and think he's one of the fastest, if not the fastest player in the game today. You'll have to prove that to me. Here's the 2 1 pitch. No matter how fast you can run on a ball hit there, one out. Cardinals in the bottom of the seventh inning will have a pinch hitter, then Morero, then McEwing. Anybody gets on Drew, McGuire. So either the seventh or the eighth inning will feature McGuire. In what could be his final at bat of the 1998 season. Here's Derek 
May. One out, nobody on. Derek 0 for 2. In this game, make it 0 for 3 as he pops into right. Drew calls off McEwing, 2 away. I haven't been here for every game. Have we seen Drew in center field yet? Hello, and thanks for listening to Digicart 2. This. I don't think so. <laughs> But they say that is his best position, center field. But I think with his throwing arm, he could play right field very well. We've seen him a lot interchanging between left and right. Two out, nobody on. Here's Vladimir Guerrero. Biggest threat in the Montreal lineup. How about the glasses for Drew? He's got him on upside down on top of his hat. I don't know that those could serve much of a purpose up there. Top of your hat. I don't care if you wear it either way. <laughs> one ball, one strike. And now he can do whatever he wants. It's fine. They're in the bottom of the fifth inning, and Houston, Chicago, leading three to one. Houston has two on, two out for Derek Bell. As Guerrero gets another hit, he's two out of four. Two out single keeps the inning alive for Fulmer. While San Francisco is playing at Colorado and leading 3 0 after three, and at San Francisco wins today, they will end with what, 10 out of their last 11 victories? Wow. Our auto tire, what's on tap? Next game on Fox Sports Midwest, 1999 spring training. I have a feeling we're going to be in mourning for Cardinal baseball in a very short period of time. This has become addictive for so many people. One on, two out. Fulmer, a hard hit ball, and off the glove of Ordaz into center field. Vladimir Guerrero goes to third. It's first and third, two out. It's a base hit, but very easily could have been a double play. Calling an error. Now it's a base hit, but two out it makes two. it first and third, yeah. two out. I mean, that's just a ball hit like that. It's just that fine line. Do you think that hit his glove, or do you think he got his knee? No, it looked like he got his knee. I thought he got his knee also. First and third, two out for Mike Barrett. That's out of play. Michael has uh, an RBI double. He's also walked and struck out. Hitting 318. He hasn't disappointed either. 318 with a one for seven in the series. So very talented young player that they're very high on. First and third, two out, the 0-1. Now you wonder about that San Francisco Colorado series not only what it means for San Francisco but what if Colorado ends the season at home being swept the future is already in trouble for Dusty Baker and Bob Gebhardt it would seem they might be out of there. Yeah Don Baylor is on the hot seat. Some believe now that Gebhardt will survive and Baylor will be let go to the second baseman McEwing gets a nasty little hop stays with it inning over still a cat tie game. Two hits with two out for Montreal. They've stranded nine. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you in part by Hoover. Nobody gets the dirt like Hoover. Nobody. By Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. If you depend on your car, depend on Dobbs. And by Steak and Shake. Extra innings were open 24 hours. Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. That's what we saw off the bat of McGuire in the third inning. Defensive change as Vladimir Guerrero is finished for the rest of the season. And Fernando Seguinal takes over in right. So Vladimir ends the day two for four, and what a year for Guerrero. Mabry will lead off and bat for Frascatori in three very good innings for John Frascatori to close out 98. It's always important to do so. Strikes out two, allows three 
hits and no runs. It's a 3 3 game in the bottom of the seventh. And here's John Mabry. From Carl Pavano and a fastball for a strike. Ball one strike on Mabry hitting 251. Nice way to end the year for Frascatori, a busy year with 69 appearances. Mabry chased one, one and two. Mabry leading off, takes one just up and in. Two balls, two strikes. John's done a nice job as a pinch hitter this year. A couple pinch hit home runs, the eight RBIs, 308 average. Well, that just was three and two. Couple pitches on the inside part of the plate have not been given to Bravano. You know who hit his 49th home run just a moment ago? Albert Bell. Yeah, he's had a remarkable season. Mabry stays alive. Go ahead, Al. Happy 69th birthday to Shirley Martin from her grandson, Jim Schotel, Jr. He's been a Cardinal fan for 45 years. And she couldn't be more proud of the Cardinal players this season. Go ahead, Joe. I just can't wait to see our pitching staff healthy. Get our guys healthy and some young players, you know, Sam, you know, you, you put the young guys, JD Drew and Tatis, Morero. With the veteran hitters, we're gonna have some fun next year. Mabry fought it off, and a one hopper to Wilton Guerrero has time, one out. What does the future hold for Alan Bennis? Don't even count on him next year. Flat out, don't even count on him, and then we'll be very happy when we see him sometime in the second half of the year. But it's no chance before next All Star break. I think in fairness to Allen, you don't even put him on a timetable. They did very little inside the shoulder this second operation. But, you know, we all put, I guess, unrealistic expectations on him to return. And, and we, all we did was believe what the doctor said. And the doctor told Allen, he said, well, you were one of those 10 percent that are going to take a little longer to heal. 2-0 the count on Marrero with one out. Pulled way off that pitch, 2-1. This guy was the number one pitching prospect out of the International League a year ago. Offseason traded for Pedro Martinez. Into right field as Seginal just into the game goes back to make the catch. By the way, the Mets are one out away from elimination today. They trail seven to two in the ninth inning at Atlanta. So they'll be howling up in New York at the Mets. They've stumbled to the finish line, losing their last five. Two to Montreal and three in Atlanta. We're going to look back at the Montreal series. And the Florida series. They had a five-game homestand and ended two and three against Florida and Montreal. was one of those pitchers that beat Thurman and Pavano, I believe. You are right. One ball, one strike. Well, get your information now for 1999 season tickets. 425-0688. 425-0688. Area code 314 for 1999 season ticket info. Hey, Joe. Get those season tickets front row seat to watch McGuire hit his 500 home run. That'll be the next milestone. That'll be next season. Two balls and a strike. Two out. Nobody on. Queuing two and two. Joe tries to reach base for the third time. Mac has 456 career home runs. Fight 
gets it off gets a base hit now he's on base for the third time today. And in that leadoff spot he responds three out of four. Times has reached base two singles run scored and a hit by pitch. His ball running in fights it off uses those hands. Get the bat through. From through to Drew. You got it. Here's JD, who is one out of three. A double his last time up. He's hitting 400. Tie game 3 3 in the seventh. Deck either here in the seventh or leading off the bottom of the eighth. One on, two out. Drew rips a base hit through the right side. McEwing will go to third, and McGuire will get another at bat here in the seventh inning. It'll be his fourth of the day. Drew is two out of four and hitting over 400. Here's McGuire for the fourth time today. He singled, homered, and walked. And has 69 home runs, 456 in his career. Three ahead of Sosa. a distinct possibility that this is his last at bat of 1998. Take a good long look. This is going to have to last you until next March in Florida. First and third, two out. No! In the field! Number 70! How much more can you give us, Big Mac? Number 70! Unlike number 62. His 10th. His 10th multi hit home run contest this season and 53rd of his career. I told you 70. I told you a multi home run day. Oh, did the inning end? <laughs> the inning ended. McGuire, his solo act of 1998, might very well come to an end on what else? A home run. <laughs> and that could be his last at bat of the year. And if it is, he ends it in perfect style. Number 70. Here he comes. We go to the eighth inning, and the Cardinals lead by three. Al Roboski, Mark McGuire in what could be his final at bat of 1998 gives the world this. 
Fastball up out over the plate, and this is a laser beam. It's a man playing with children. 70 home runs. I don't think anybody can put a big enough asterisk to taint this home run for two. Unbelievable. Look at that swing. Do you think he caught that? I mean, he hit that ball so square. Sometimes he hits some majestic, high towering fly balls, he gets underneath them. That one he was right on top of. It's only his second home run of the day, but his third curtain call. He got two <laughs> after number 69. And there it is after number 70. A nice round number. 70 home runs. Everybody used to talk about 61 and 61. Now they'll talk about 70 and 98. And depending on how this bottom of the eighth inning goes, McGuire might take the field in the top of the ninth inning. Tony LaRusa could pull the final day of the year at home, send a replacement into the game, and get him one more. Well deserved ovation. The people here in St. Louis will be clapping, but they'll be clapping representing not only themselves, but sports fans around the world. Well, Joe, remember, McGuire will be honored to receive the St. Louis Award in a post game ceremony, and we'll carry that live right here on Fox Sports Midwest. The award is given to the individual who's made the most outstanding contribution or brought the greatest distinction to the metropolitan St. Louis community. And Mark McGuire has done that. He fits that description as Marrero. Back pedals to make the catch. And we go to Bob Ramsey, who just put number 70 up on the manually operated scoreboard. Bob? Joe, Al, I'll tell you, there's obviously never been anything like this. Our buddy Rich Gould was here Friday night. It was tied 66 66. Since then, we've taken over for our pal. We've upped the ante. It will not be topped 70 to 66. There's no words to describe it, gentlemen. This is history, and we've got it right here on the Manless scoreboard for you. Thank you, Bob. Number 70. It's got to be a unique view up there as these guys have been working double time at that scoreboard up there this year. Ground ball to short. Curtis King is taking care of the first two. What do you think's going through the mind of McGuire? I think he believes what he's doing. Nothing. <laughs> I think he's just shut it down. He's got to. He's got to be so mentally and physically and emotionally drained, he probably can't feel anything. But yet, but yet, Joe, talking to him the last couple days, he seemed actually more relaxed than I've ever seen. Him. That's why I really felt before the game. No bang practice, not a care in the world that he was going to come out and do something dramatic and I think he succeeded. I would say. How do you duplicate it? Remember early in the year somebody asked him what happens if he hit 70 home runs. He said I'll retire. Uh -oh. Don't well, remind him. But then he goes. But then he, I asked him I said were you serious. He goes are you crazy. <laughs> he, goes, he said I'd be back so quick. Ball and two strikes on Ryan McGuire. Who hits here for the pitcher Pavano? Different spelling. McGuire takes a ball in the dirt. This is the more typical Irish spelling of McGuire, by the way. The McGuire. U rather the W. Right. The U rather than the W. I remember somebody gave me a letter to, to Mark. To inquire about a, you know, a, an opportunity. This was last year. Mark read the letter and said, "I misspelled my name. That doesn't sound good for this." <laughs> and that's why a lot of people misspell the name because this is the typical way the Irish would spell it. But that guy, Mark McGuire, spells it M C G W I R E. We'll never forget it now. 70 and 98. Playback, playback. The pitch from Pavano and the drive into left. 
I don't know the gentleman's name out in left field, but it almost went through him. And back rattling around in the concourse out in left. And I think it's going to depend on how this half inning unfolds, Al. We'll see how Tony La Russa wants to play it. I was in the clubhouse before the game watching Tony talk to Mark about this very situation and how they want to play it at the end of the game. If they want him to finish it out or if they want him to take the field in the top of the ninth inning and then come out to an ovation. So it's going to be interesting the next half inning. But right now we're going to get an enormous ovation for Willie McGee. With a bad ankle, that's it. There will be no at bat. The crowd, I think, still wondering what's going on. But McGee in just regular tennis shoes walking to the plate. His ankle is really bad, so he gets announced. He's in the record books as having appeared in this game. The crowd's chanting Willie, and they're going to get maybe a curtain call, but that's it. And yeah, we're going to get a curtain call, and then we're going to hear another ovation as I think Lankford's going to pinch here yeah. for Willie. You know, Willie's so shy. He really wanted to be able to play. This is Ray Lankford who will ultimately, but let's get Willie back out there for one more. Here he comes. I talked to Willie yesterday. And I said, Willie, boy, I sure hope you're back. And he said, you know, Al, I'd like to be back, but you know, you never know about these things. But if Willie McGee has a desire to play, I'm sure he'll be wearing the Cardinal uniform and at some point we'll find his number up there in the retired numbers. He's not going to be a Hall of Famer but boy he is a Hall of Fame person and he's one of the fans favorite and deserves to be recognized as such. One of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. Everything you think Willie McGee is looking at him from afar he is. And here's Langford. What a year for Ray Langford Al. Well, unbelievable. I asked Ray why. He wasn't in the game and he kind of said hey I'm on empty. Now I told Tony play the kids let the kids play today. But it's, isn't it great that we get Ray up here to have the fans acknowledge what great numbers he's put up a 293 average 31 home runs career high 105 RBIs. Maybe he can get a career high in home runs with one swing. That is what he has staring at him although he's fallen in the hole 0 and 2. Ray Langford with one more home run would top his previous season high of 31 which he set last year and again this year. He has a career high in RBIs he's hitting 293 and he takes a ball from Anthony Telford the new Montreal right hander. Be prepared by the way. Langford takes up and in for glowing comments on the part of Tony La Russa about Felipe Alou and the Montreal pitching staff. He was beside himself before the game. So happy that the Expos are pitching to McGuire. He was so relieved and he has a boatload of respect for Felipe Alou one of the most respected men in this game. Well how could you not and. You know, Pavano went out there. I mean, he's one of the best young pitchers going, and he challenged him with a fastball, and it was answered. Langford comes up empty, so he strikes out. Pretty powerful spot in the lineup from Gant to McGee to Langford. Ray is gone. Tatis walks in. Our Bud Light game summary very simple. Game summary brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up, never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Mark McGuire, number 69 and 70, with a score. A smaller print than the home runs. Yeah, let's get another look at it. 69 and 70. One out, nobody on, and Tatis to third. High hop, good play, Andrews. Bad throw and safe. Fernando will head to second and make it there. He'll advise throw there but another error is saved on a dig out of the dirt by Cabrera. So it'll be likely a base hit E5. 
Although we'll see. He did the tough part, getting the ball cleanly and then just uncorked a wild one. Oh, really, it should be an error all the way. So that's why I'm sure it'll end up being like you said. Base hit E5. It's big leagues. Alfred makes a pitch, gets him headed towards his third baseman, and they don't make the play. We have yet to get a ruling on it. Runner at second, one out. Luis Ordaz at the plate. And a strike over the outside corner. Luis with a an enormous amount of experience picked up at the tail end of this year and while his average is picked up and he's swinging the bat better his defense has been not what he or the Cardinals had hoped and they gave him this opportunity that's down the line the foul Ooh. like it caught somebody in the shoulder down there. So a one out. Situation for Ordaz with a runner at second, one away. You know, Ordaz is end up hitting the ball pretty well, Joe. But I think it's the questionable defense that makes the Cardinals want to go out and find a shortstop. The 0-2 to Ordaz outside a ball and two strikes. Emotionally, you can understand it. What a weekend. What a year. These people have been coming out 3,195,021 strong to watch this season unfold. And they will never forget it. The owners won't forget it. Thanks to 3,195,021 who came out to watch it as Ordaz pops it into center. Back to get it, Terry Jones. Batiste will tag, but stay put, two out. Don't forget, coming up at 4.30 on the Fox Sports Net, your provider, Fox Sports Midwest, Baseball 98, one for the record books, I'll say. And a big two-home run day for McGuire today after a two-home run day for McGuire yesterday. Seventy and ninety-eight. Runner at second, two out from Mabry. Second at bat of the afternoon for John Telford. Second, two out, one ball, no strikes. And the ground ball to second. Picked up by Wilton Guerrero. Out at first, and the Cardinals are finished in the eighth. We go to what should be the last half inning of the year. Cardinals lead 6 3. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you in part by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. By Southwestern Bell, go wireless with someone you know. And by Southwest Airlines, with fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. Fly Southwest. What a day here at the ballpark. I'm a bit surprised that Mark McGuire didn't go back out and then have Mabry come in to replace him. But the minute I say that, I think about the kind of guy McGuire is, and maybe it shouldn't surprise us that he didn't want to make a spectacle of him leaving this game the fans have cheered to no end for Mark McGuire and maybe he figures he will leave quietly although he will be back out after the game for that ceremony. Yeah I think that's the case in point and hopefully people here will stay to the end of the game to where they can really acknowledge the all time home run single season home run king. 
also Tony is so uh, into not doing anything to jeopardize the integrity of the game. Juan Acevedo who has a record of eight and three but Al has been almost automatic out of the bullpen takes over and here's another big story for 1998. That's right. He's closing out the 98 season in fine fashion notching 15 consecutive scoreless outings covering St. Louis's last 28 games. Acevedo has 10 saves and two wins in 16 innings of work during that span. Well Phil Luzerski. Is that right? Ozerski. Is that the other microphone? Phil, you, sir, may have caught the most important home run ball ever hit in the history of baseball. Can we ask you, did you catch it or did it catch you? We're going to give Phil Al's headset and I'll talk to him. You get to wear Al Rabaski's headset. Do, do the wonders ever end for you? The man, mad Hungarian. You hmm. got it. Well, here we go. I'll ask the question again. Ball one to Guerrero. A line drive. We're down to two outs. Phil Ozerski, you got a chance to catch maybe the most important home run ball in the history of Major League Baseball. How do you feel? It's amazing. I, I have no idea. It's, uh, I'm in awe. I had no expectations to catch this ball, get this ball. I was just here to, to watch this spot to watch the game with a bunch of friends. I work at the Washington University uh, Genome Sequencing Center, and they're there waiting to be down in the uh, the batting cage. There they are. Well, uh, Phil, I know our time is running short because there's only two outs left in the season here. What are you going to do with the ball? I don't know. Good. I Wait. have no idea. Wait. Take some time. Think about it. Let the offers come in. Do what you will. I had no idea that I'd catch it. I had no expectations. I don't know what, the, what I'm going to do with the ball, but I just want to shake Mark McGuire's hand. There you go. Congratulations. I get to shake yours. Thank you. Phil Ozerski, congratulations. As Phil joins us in the booth, a little pop up into left. Out goes Ordaz, and that is out number two off the bat of Terry Jones. Two out, nobody on, and the batter will be Derek May. Although we're going to have a pinch hitter for May now. May will be lifted for Robert Perez. Perez pops it up, right side, Mabry back, long run, season over. Cardinals win it six to three in a season that saw Mark McGuire shatter the single season home run record of 61 and 61. It's now 70 and 98 back after this. This stadium is about to erupt folks. They are dying to get another glimpse of Mark McGuire before everybody heads home and looks toward 1999. And we will all get that Al Raboski. Sir, again, it's been a pleasure covering this and following this on uh, just about a day-to-day -day basis. So what a what a great year. Wow, Joe, it's I mean it's so emotional. You know, all the memories that go through as a former athlete, as a broadcaster now, it's just so proud to be a part of the Cardinal organization to see this man wear the birds on the bat yeah. and do what he has done in front of the greatest fans in all of baseball. And in this great showcase that now truly everyone in America understands why Mark McGuire signed with the Cardinals. Why we say that this is the greatest town and baseball town in America. And I think not only in the United States but the world knows it too. They're playing the home runs on the video board here at the ballpark. And while they set up at home plate Al's told you a couple of times that Mark McGuire today will receive the St. Louis Award. The award is given to the individual who has made the most outstanding contribu contribution or has brought the greatest distinction to the metropolitan St. Louis community. And uh, he's already received the commissioner's award when he broke the record that night post game ceremony and then Sammy Sosa subsequently did the same and received the same award. 
But baseball is going to have to come up with something. Uh, and I know that the commissioner's award is very distinguished, but uh, you keep talking about MVP, MVP, MVP of the National League might be Sosa, MVP of the American League. Uh, that's still up in the air. But the MVP of baseball in 1998 is our very own Mark McGuire. Oh, undoubtedly. Um, you know, and you don't want people to think that, well, we're diminishing what Sosa or any Absolutely other great not. athletes have done, but this guy has had to do it with all the pressure. Sosa has deferred all pressure to Mark McGuire. He has handled it better than anybody. I mean, as we look at some of the great players that played the game in recent years and some of the guys that have been up the top of all the leaderboards, what makes this so special is the way Sosa has come out and handled things, the way McGuire's handled things, that we truly have heroes for our youth to look up to. Again, we are waiting for Mark McGuire to appear and come out onto the field to receive the distinguished St. Louis Award. And there is nobody even close to what Mark McGuire has brought to this city and to this game in 1998. There's the final, from the final game of 1998. The Cardinals win it 6-3. Another save for Acevedo. And we could talk on and on and on about the individual points of the game and what Acevedo has meant to the Cardinals the final month. And what he might mean in the upcoming years to the Cardinals. Mark McGuire is uh, in the dugout or in the clubhouse. We're waiting for him to pop out. Right now they are playing the home runs on the video boards. We'll give you two angles of each home run. Here today, this is number 69. And this was one of those typical McGuire moonshots, Al, that just kept floating and didn't come down for a long time. Kind of a backup breaking ball, stays in the inner half. He opens his hips, but he keeps his hands in position to where he can make it a fair ball and another home run. And another look at the swing, a little tighter, and look at the ball come off his bat straight up, and the strength just carries it out of here. There's a great picture in the cover of foul ball the commemorative issue from Mark McGuire that actually shows the bat bent at the point of contact his hands and generates such great bat speed. This is just a classic line drive. This ball is absolutely crushed. And that was one of the old well it's either going to go over the wall or through it and it went over the wall for number 70 in the tight shot just the ball exploding off his bat. For number 70, two yesterday, two today, four home runs, two day games, the last two day games of the season. While Sammy Sosa and the Cubs hope for a victory today in Houston, the victory in the home run race, the great home run race of 1998, may with those swings today very well end up Mark McGuire's victory with 70 home runs and uh, San Francisco's blowing away Colorado and it looks like the Cubs are going to have to win although Colorado scoring now in the bottom of the fifth inning. It looks like the Cubs Al, are going to have to win to maybe force a playoff tomorrow at Wrigley. And again people were worried about that extra game for Sosa which would count on the regular season statistics again McGuire got an extra game this year the Cardinals actually will play 163 and have played 163. Uh, but the extra game tomorrow might very well happen in a one game playoff for the wild card spot and the numbers would count but now it's a four home run lead for McGuire as he has just gone off after Sosa hit number 66 I down in Houston say... McGuire roughly 45 minutes later took off here's Jack Buck right from the Right from the singing of the national anthem before the game, with the support that you gave this ball club throughout the year, and this afternoon from start to finish, you are just incredible. This season has come to an exciting finish. St. Louis will be better in the standings next year, but I want to talk to you about a very prestigious award, the St. Louis Award. It is given to an individual who has made the most outstanding contribution or has brought the greatest distinction to the metropolitan St. Louis community during the past year. Who do you think it is?
The award was established in 1932 by the late David Wall, a leading St. Louis philanthropist. In addition to many St. Louis civic leaders, past award winners include Lou Brock, Lou Brock in 1977, and Jackie Joyner Kersey in 1996. And who better to join that group than Mark McGuire? giant ovation. With us on the field are the following members of the award committee. Dr. William Danforth, Dr. Earl Lazerson, Andrew Newman, Elliot Stein, Leon Strauss Jr., Joe Throdall, and Edwin Trusheim. Also here are members of the David Wool family. His granddaughter, Elizabeth Russell, great-grandson Tony Russell, grandson Jeff Rothschild, and great-granddaughter, Lindsay Rothschild. Here to make the presentation, this moment you've been waiting for, the for one of our most distinguished St. Louisans, the former chancellor, now the chairman of the board of our distinguished Washington University, Dr. William Danforth. This, this award has been a, awarded on 61 occasions in 66 years. Past recipients, in addition to two athletes, Lou Brock and Jackie Joyner Kersey, are three Nobel Prize winners, one Pulitzer Prize winner, two former mayors, civic leaders, including Gussie Bush and Father Paul Reiner. I would like to read this citation, and then the plaque will be appointed uh, by Tony, and the check for Mark McGuire's favorite charity by Lindsay. The citation reads, for, for lifting the spirits of the community and the nation. for providing an example of good sportsmanship, honesty, unselfishness, and team spirit. For breaking the 35-year-old record of 61 home runs. for being a shining light of baseball, for bringing excitement to the game and to the fans, for achieving recognition and acclaim for St. Louis. For focusing attention on abused children and committing substantial personal resources for their betterment, this, The St. Louis Award for 1998 is presented to Mark McGuire, the individual who more than anyone else has brought credit to St. Louis.
Well, it's uh, pretty simple that this season probably wouldn't have happened if I didn't get the great support from these great fans of St. Louis. From all my teammates, coaches, owners. To all my friends and family back in California and the ones that are here with me, thank you. This is a season that I will never, ever forget, and I hope everybody in baseball never forget. So thank you very much. made by Mark McGuire and he can rest assured that no one will ever ever forget 1998 and this incredible run which started by his own admission from the day he got to spring training everybody asked him if he thought he could break the record he didn't really want to answer the question but he said if I hit 10 home runs a month I've got a chance and if somebody gets to September with 50 they've got a chance to break it. Well, he shattered the record and has hit five home runs in the last three games to get to 70. No one in baseball and any real true sports fan will ever forget 1998 for what Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa have given all of us. Mike Thurman, the starter for the Expos. He went after him. Here's a breaking ball. He wanted it on the outside. It left it over the inside corner, backed up a little bit. Mark hits historic number 69. But he wasn't through today, was he? Carl Pavano, who is a starter making his first relief appearance of the year, he took over one of Felipe's best young pitchers and going to be a real star in this league. He's on the mound for number 70. He challenges with the first pitch fastball, and it was just a vicious line drive. But as McGuire gets it up over the BJC into the fans and the stands, and Joe, when you got 70, the 60s are gone. Now you're at 70. That round figure of 70 in 98. They talked about 61 and 61. Folks, 70 and 98, and Mark McGuire is now on that list of the greatest sports figures in the history of sports. Names like Ruth, Jordan, Gretzky, some of the greats in Olympic past. And another name on the baseball list, Mark McGuire. He has given all of us something we will never forget. From all of us here in St. Louis, thank you to Mark McGuire. Now back to Fox Sports Net.